I'm so like, like, so moved. How, how. How he reached out his hand and grabbed me. And he pulled me out of that. It was so addicted. That I was so addicted. That at one point in the addiction, I asked Lord if the only way you could use me, if people will look at me and say, I never want to be like that. Then use me in that one way. I was so addicted. You're listening to Moms of Miracles. Today we have a really special guest on, a new friend, but a friend that we feel like we've known forever. His name is Michael Beckman, and he is the owner and CEO of Relentless Entertainment. Welcome, Michael. Hey, ladies. So, so happy to be on with you, you ladies. You guys are so much fun. Thank you for being on. We're excited to uh, let Jesus be glorified today in your testimony. So I figured we'd start with where you are today what you do and we'll just pull relevant information from your background okay okay what do i do i am a father first of all i um i have a uh, an um 18 year old son who about two months ago into the military is getting ready to graduate from uh, in uh, fort benning georgia so we'll be out there here soon the reason why I say that is because now that getting older and stuff, now that's my first priority is to be a father. We're in the younger years, and you'll hear later later on that that wasn't a priority. And so, first of all, I'm a father. And then um, um, I, uh, I actually own a business by the name of Relentless Entertainment. Um, yeah, so with a partner of mine, by the name of Wolfgang Kovacek, and he's been my partner for mm, about almost four years now. So yeah, that's that's what I do. That's I don't awesome. like titles. I already told you guys I don't like titles too much. But, <laughs> yeah. You are the son of the Most High God. That's the only title that you need, right? <laughs> right. I'm not, yeah, I'm just not big into titles. Yeah. Right. That's that's kind of how America identifies people. So I get it. No problem. That's right. So is, is Relentless Entertainment then four years old with uh, your partnership? Oh, no. no, no, no. Relentless Entertainment started in 2004 after um, uh, an incident in my life where my, my son was, was, if you want to be real, you know, I, because of my behavior, it, they, the government stepped in and took him from me. And so the wake up call instantly a wake up call but it was a it was a you know it was a progress you know what i'm saying but definitely a wake up yeah. so, how old was your son in 2004 he was i believe 4 or 5 yeah yeah it was uh it was um yeah no worries. Um, tough situation. I don't know. I, yeah, it was a tough situation. It's um, you know, you when you come into the realization that you you cause those types of um incidents, they are responsible for that. It uh, it's sometimes it's hard to own, but you got to own it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So um, anyway, yeah, that's but it changed my life. It was the beginning of a of a new season. So yeah. much as, as hard as it was, it was, I'm so grateful for it. So grateful. Well, I love the fact that you talk about ownership because I, I don't think that everyone comes to that place in their life. And I can imagine that your testimony and who you are as a person really speaks volumes to people in your industry. Because you're yeah. in entertainment. You know, um, yeah. One of the, one of the things that, um, um, when 
I used to run with a motorcycle outlaw club. One of the things that they they told us is that you have to own it. You 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 know you, you do something, you're gonna own it. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna you're not gonna run from it. You're gonna you're gonna be a man and face it. And um, I've always kind of had that mentality even before I used to run with those guys. Is that you do something as painful as it, as it may be. Um, you gotta, you gotta face the storm. You gotta face, face the consequences if you want to play ball. You know, the, there's just, uh, I like to, to talk about analogies of like an eagle. A senior eagle doesn't fly away from the storm; it flies into the storm. And that's what, that, that's that's where, that's where you have to, you have to own what you what you've done. And uh, you know, that's why I'm so. Um, Transparent, you know. If I can, if I can help somebody by not, not not hiding behind a title, or hiding in a pulpit or a Bible or even God, and be transparent about my fault, because so people, many people are afraid of being judged. You know what? Don't care. Just don't care. I could care less about when someone judges me because they've never walked in my shoes. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it was. The, the it was these trials, these these um, the road of trials and temptations and and um, frustration, addiction has made me the man I am today, and it's been a man of love. So I can love people, and I you know I can hang out and be cool, and you know just understand relate to the homeless, and you know it's awesome. It's it's an awesome it's an awesome place to be, and I don't have to um, money doesn't dictate my life it doesn't like i love jeans and, and t-shirts it's just like i don't have to be hollywood you know what i'm saying i just just am who i am so, yeah. that sounds like freedom all question yeah. i'm all about freedom yeah. that sounds all like I'm, freedom i'm not bound to to the four walls of of um of American high structured church. I'm not yeah. bound to that. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. my, my church is out there on the street. Yeah. You know? We are the church. Yeah, we are the church. We um, just, um, well, my mind is going all, we're getting all free already. Go, go for an, it. We had an actor at the house the other day and he was, um, um, he's a well-known actor and he opened up to, to me and Angela, and, and it, it amazes me when you see someone on camera and the way they depict themselves and their acting, stuff like that. But when you meet them in person, how real life really is to them. Mm. Lead the same, they, they feel the same, and they're just looking for the same love you're looking for. And they're, they're and quite frankly, they want someone to not necessarily fix them, but just to listen. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. well, it's a very unique um, situation being a um, being who I am. Getting in um, in meetings with with um, it, let, let, me, let me clarify something. I work in an industry that's very uh, 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 noticeable, right? You don't need to be noticeable for me to notice you. Mm -hmm. You know, as a matter of fact, I I actually watch the one who's sitting in the corner by themselves, or or who set apart. Or I, those are the ones that that I care to. And but but you know, just some people, I've had people kind of judge me, like you know, you have to be somebody to for me to engage. And we're all somebody. Yeah. All, Every single one of us are somebody, and every single one needs someone to need love. I don't care who. I don't care who you are. You need to be loved. You want your body, your presence wants to be loved, and that's why, in my opinion, in my opinion, that love is our greatest weapon. Because the dark side has no paradigm. It's all based on fear and hate and manipulation, not not the love that's depicted in the Bible where trust 
It has no keep no record of wrong. You know what I'm saying? It in and, in and, and it it doesn't have to perform. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's the kind of love that I really try to walk out. Do I get frustrated? Am I human? Absolutely. But I you know, I problem be people say, you know, bro, you know, if I offend you, I'm sorry, you know. So yeah. I can see why you and John are good friends because y'all kind of speak the same language. John and... is my homie. <laughs> we tight. Yeah, we're supposed to be together next weekend. Oh, nice. Yeah, that, meeting that man was uh, like 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 you ladies met him. It just like a voice, God's voice to me. I followed it, and now he's one of literally one of my best friends. Literally. And, uh, you know, just uh, the things that, that we're going to be doing with that man are going to be off the hook. <laughs> Hawaii pretty soon together and doing some stuff over there. So that'd be cool. Yeah, I love that man. The guys, like, to the wheels fall off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How did you, how did you meet him? Oh, okay. Um, well, um, so you guys know John's story, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so John was more on the delegating end mm -hmm. of, of projecting evil and content, uh, uh, what they call those uh, um, curses and stuff like that, right? Um, manipulation, all he was the one that was delegating that, right? Well, I was on the receiving end of it in my in, in my world, and um, but I never wanted, I never asked for it at a very um, dark. Um, since I was a little boy has experienced severe um, hauntings and um, uh, encounters and, uh, and eventually um, um, uh, was raped by which is you know what I'm saying and so um, and the person that I was with knows my, knew my story and that person was um, looking at John's John's uh, YouTube, and she told me, "Michael, you got to see this." And I was like, "Okay." And we were driving on the freeway, and I pulled over right away. And when I saw the video and started talking, I said, "I just like I felt like I felt like God was speaking to me, speaking to my heart, you know." And um, within a matter of minutes watching, this is what I felt. Like I heard, and um, first he was gonna become one of my best friends. Two, that um, that uh, I was to call him, and he would respond. And three is that um, um, that I would be called uh, to tell his story in a movie. So, yeah, so that that's that's how, that's how I I first initially knew of him. Uh, I got where I was going. I picked up the phone. I called the number and I emailed. Didn't hear anything, and I just kind of let it go. And like the following week, I was like, it started burning in me again. And this time, I called. I called again, and I sent a message, and I put down my phone. And ten minutes later, he calls me back, and I and I told him exactly what I just told you with no like, oh, how are you or anything like that? I said, John, I'm just gonna be straight up with you, man. This is what I called to do for you, do, do for you in your life. Oh, the other thing is, is that he was gonna teach me a whole nother level of warfare. Wow. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So that is exactly like our story with John. Yeah. Um, only we don't work in the entertainment business, but God told Rachel to reach out to him that he would respond to her, and he did. Not yet, you don't. <laughs> Not yet, we don't. <laughs> and then as soon as we did, got done interviewing him, we said to each other, oh my gosh, John Story is going to be a movie. Yeah. No. We just knew that. And then a week later, not even a week later, you call us and tell us that it's going to be a movie. So yeah. This is a divine appointment. This yeah. is a divine connection. Yeah. And um, we're just so happy to know you. We think you're precious. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We love that you uh, are all things to all people and just a total softy for Jesus, you know? Yeah. And, um, so your testimony then, you were a preacher's kid. 
Still am. Still am. Still are. So <laughs> preacher's kid and you're growing up and I guess have a different level of warfare against you because of the call on your parents' life? Mm. Or no? D well, you gotta understand that um, I don't necessarily know the background of my birth parents. So I don't know exactly. I heard that my father was an alcoholic and I, 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 I can't prove that. That's what I heard. And then, um, and then I heard that my my birth mother just didn't want us. Just and I, I say this because I have a twin sister, and um, it was just there was no there was nothing there. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry I forgot you, forgot your other question. No, you're good. So so are you adopted then? I am adopted. So your adopted parents are preachers. That's right. Wow. So where did they minister? They have their own church in Barstow, California, called Living Waters. Yeah. Wow. And um, actually, my brother, my I have a brother that's Vietnamese, and um, he was the last baby, very last baby out of Vietnam. They have a picture of him being being um, handed from one soldier to another off the helicopter. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very cool picture. Wow. So. Um, you're growing up in the church. You went to Sunday school and stuff. Was um, what happened when you were about, you know, eight? How how yeah. did that happen? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I would just I want to preface something first, okay? Yeah. And that is, um, um, my my because of my story, because how 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 um, destructive my life has. Um, some people want to blame my parents. They need to be removed from the equation of this, of this, this, the character of that equation. They need to be removed from that. They did the best job that we, that they could possibly do. We all have a free will. You know what I'm saying? And, and we all make choices. And, um, uh, so anyway, I just, I just wanna, I just wanna, although I never, I never wanted um, the kind of evil that I experienced in my life from a boy, I never wanted that. Never knew of it until I actually had an encounter with Satan. And um, I was eight years old. I was sleeping, uh, I was, for some reason I was in my mom's bed. And I, d I don't, I don't know, I don't remember why, but, but I was sleeping on my, my, um, on my mom's bed and I was facing the wall and I was just well, I was just looking at the wall and um, out came the wall with Satan and he had a he had Hawaiian shirt on and a straw hat um, he was half man half beast looked like a kangaroo on the bottom you know what I'm saying and um, he had a joint hanging out of his mouth which is I didn't know that I got older but um and started or using drugs, but um, his face looked like a zigzag man on the back of the zigzag papers. If you turn around, there's a face. That's what his face looked like. And um, um, he came out of the wall with a joint hand that was hanging out of his mouth. He took his right hand and put it on top of my head, blew the smoke in my face, and it about you. And from that moment forth. Um, my whole innocence of being a boy went away. I was, um, I, I mean, I, I can get into what happened, but disrespectful, but, um, um, just, uh, I was no longer that eager boy. It, it, my mind, I, I don't know, my mind kind of like went into an adult mind. And I was doing things that, um, you know, were uh, sexual in nature. And um, it was, uh, uh, it was horrible because, um, I mean, 
Like it opened, like whatever, whatever, whatever happened, the, the demons in that room, and they would draw blood from me. I'm not gonna say how, but but they would they would hurt me, and I would be bleeding, and um, demons would stand in my room, and watch over me, like the Grim Reaper or the Death Angel would stand over me and watch me. Um, uh, I was, I became very like a Jekyll and Hyde. Like I'd be super like, I'd be like two faced, you know what I'm saying? And then go out and do these things when I was a boy. I didn't understand. I, I didn't understand what was going on. And um, uh, just uh, super tormented by demons uh, all the time. And, and you know, uh, I felt a lot of rejection, even though my parents never rejected me. I think that came from my first, but from, from my birth mother and from my parents, my birth, my birth parents. And so there was a lot of um, elements that were um, in place before my parents actually received me as an adopted son. But in, in my heart, those parents are my mom and dad. I, I don't have any other parents, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, I went through... I went through a lot of, uh, th that was just the beginning. That was just the beginning of my encounters through my life. And it was, but it was eight years old. And um, I wasn't afraid though. It's just, uh, the things that you experience that when you're a boy, you don't understand. You know what I'm saying? You don't. And then every time I was, I would uh, try to share that with my mom and dad my jaw would lock shut. I couldn't even talk. And there was an incident where um, we were in a restaurant and um, my mom was reprimanding me and I felt an anger come into me or rage. I know it was a demon. I, it came through my, it came, it, 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 the, the, the rage started at my feet in like a thermometer came up and went to get my eyes, it was lights out. And I went nuts. I, I jumped, um, from what I understand, I went um, across a major freeway of six lanes uh, on the freeway. In Chino, jumped over a six foot fence and they found a corner and I didn't know what was going on. I was like, when I came to, I was like, what, what happened? And then I could talk. All I could do was I could hear them, I couldn't. I couldn't talk. I, I could hear my mom and dad, and like asking, like, "What's wrong, Michael? What's wrong?" But I couldn't. I couldn't say anything. Actually, I couldn't say anything uh, until I was like 33 uh, to my mom. But that was the first time I was able to to share with my mom when, when I was 33. Wow, 33 being Jesus' year. You know, I always think Jesus was 33 when he. Uh, died on the cross and ascended to heaven that's that's a significant year yeah and i thank you for sharing that with us and i know that that's you know not been easy but i also know that you've overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony so when that was happening so because rachel and i have eight-year-olds so we found it curious hearing john's story he yeah. was trained as a satanist at eight years old right what happened to you at eight years old eight rachel, years old eight-year-olds you know yeah. so something about that number yeah. you know there's there's um um I've, 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 I've talked several times with kids I brought in my parents will, will, will ask me what do you do and and my recommendation is to read the book of Joshua because it brings identity to a warrior you know what I'm saying it, it brings it, and it's a uh, especially you got boys it brings um um See, in, in in many situations, I think they're getting a little bit real more now that um, those ain't wimps. You know what I'm saying? They're not, sometimes they're depicted as, ooh, you know, like really, you know, angelic. Uh, as angelic as they may be, they're warriors. And, um. When you read the book, of, the book of Joshua, God himself had to speak to Joshua, right? 
Moses, my servant, is dead. So he had he had no longer the, the wherewithal to lean on Moses, right? Now leaning, leaning the battle. And his name, Joshua, is actually the same name in the Old Testament. It's Yeshua in the New Testament, right? right. So leading the battle, right? And um, but in his own humanity. He still questioned he was the man of the hour. God had to come to him three times and say, be strong and have good courage. He had to convince him three times that he was the man to lead. Three times. And sometimes when 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 um we go through those situations, um I'm I'm all about um I don't move from a place of fear. Uh I don't pray from a place of fear. I pray from a place of authority. Yes. Place of posturing as already a champion. You know what I'm saying? I don't pray. Don't pray like these. In, like um, oh Lord, just keep the demons away. Ah man, you know we're warriors, man. And uh, it, but for 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 children, Joshua is a great book. And the in the in the in the um in the story of David and Goliath. That boy, David, you know, the, 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 I love that story. What I love about that story the most, he was 13 years old, right? And my Bible tells me that he ran to meet Goliath in battle. There was no, there was no cause of, there was, there was no delay. There was no doubt. He ran at that guy and like, if I could only say, you know what I'm I'm taking you out, you know what I'm saying? Taking you out, because he knew who supported him. And that's half, I, I think that um, another thing that I say is that we serve the God that knows every star in the sky by name, every hair on your head, the number of every hair on your head, and every grain of sand on the, all the beaches of the world. He knows the number. So why aren't we walking like giants? Yeah. Why aren't we walking from a place of authority? But but as soon as we get beat down with some, we take on this victim mentality. I'll tell you right now, girl, I am no victim. I'm an overcomer. I am a champion. I'm a warrior. And you can't keep me down. You can't. You, you may be able to c come at me with your, with your, with your words and, 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 and whatever. But my Bible says I'm to bless my enemies. Amen. They go to the table before my enemies. Amen. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why I, I really, when evil people try to come against me, I try to love them at the greatest capacity that I can, that I'm able. I'm curious, you said three things that, that God wanted you connect with John, he was going to teach you a whole new level of warfare. Is that, has he, has he shown you some new Wait, things? Yeah, there's a, um, it isn't, it isn't like, um, you, you have to understand, John's my homie. Right. It isn't like he postures himself like that or I posture myself like that or anything mm -hmm. like that. We're like this. We come to each other as comrades in battle. Come on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We lock arms and we go forward. And so we, he shares things to me, like sometimes he says, the church isn't ready for what he knows. You know what I'm saying? And, and there's, there's things that, that um, the church doesn't allow us to speak about it because they freak out and they want to, they want to, they want to minimize that 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 there is an adversary. They don't want to. Oh, we don't want to talk about that here. Okay, okay. So you just go ahead and hide your hide in your closet and hide your skeletons. I'm going to be free and wide open. So I don't. I'm not afraid to love people. I'm not afraid to like. If, like, <laughs> I'm going to be real. Jesus loves the rapist, the molester, the murderer, right? The taxes. That's who we love. That's who we hung out with. 
But when, when we get around those people, we're so afraid to be identified with them because we're so worried about our own freaking status. Mm. Man, Jesus, Jesus wasn't worried about his status because his identity was in God, wasn't in his status. Was it in his identity wasn't laid up in the miracles that he did. His identity was laid up in his father. His identity laid in the bloodline of royalty. He gained, that's why he walked the identity of his father. You know what I'm saying? So the, the Bible says that perfect love cast out all fear. Now, check this out. Check this out. If you check this out, <laughs> the ability to walk in perfect love with no fear, imagine the person, the spiritual power that you would have on this earth. Yes. You're not bound to the man, the rules of man, or um. And I'm not trying. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like. Um. I'm not. Um. Um. The the Bible says, "Don't forsake the gathering of of His people." Right? Don't forsake that. I'm not. I'm not coming against that. But sometimes there's an agenda by man that isn't grit. That isn't. That isn't. Um, ordained by God. Right? There's an agenda there sometimes. But when you when you walk in a love that casts out all fear, like what? I can love you and have no agenda. Like, it just it, it it allows you to walk in a realm in a spiritual realm where God will show you things because you walk with no fear. Right. Why do you think? When the, the when the message was delivered to Mary, right? When the message that she was going to give birth, right? What was the first thing that angel said? Fear not. Fear not. What was the first thing that said when when um when Jesus was raised when the angels uh, came to um was it Mary when when the the grave was empty? I have a message for you. He's risen, right? And the, the angel first thing out of his mouth was fear not. Yeah. The spiritual realm is scary. Yeah. Discernment. When you have the spirit of God in you, you can discern the evil from the from the from from the angelic. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know when in your spirit what is there to hurt you and harm you. But when you walk with the power and the might of Christ and the and the love of God. It casts out all that fear, and you are able to walk with authority amongst the serpents and the scorpions, amongst the demons and principalities of the earth, and you walk with authority. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's why. Um, I, 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 I'm so like I'm I'm mesmerized by the power of God sometimes because He allows me to walk with the executives in Hollywood, which is a. It could be a cutthroat kind of thing, but I ain't scared. What do I do? You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm from a little church from Barstow, California, with an outlaw background, and and God took me there and sent me to Hollywood to change the atmosphere, to impact culture, to impact lives, and to love on Hollywood. And I'm not afraid. I don't care what people think. I don't care about the news. I don't care about your celebrity status. You just need to be loved. That's it. Wow. That is amazing. I know that you minister everywhere you go. Yeah. Because our conversations are always the same. They're uplifting. They're powerful. Like, I just know that's who you are with everybody. Do you have... Um, so you have a group of people that uplift you, like a life group or a group of friends, or how do you worship? Where do you go? Um, so I travel a lot. I'm always always somewhere. But to, to say that um, 
I get a lot of uplifting from Angela, you know. I get um, a lot of uplifting from John, um, th- my business partner. I the, the you you ladies are only starting to get to know or 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 get a climate of the people that surround me. You, you're just barely because of our talks on the phone and stuff. Right. And, and I don't I don't need necessarily need to, need to prove anything to anybody. You know what I'm right. saying? But I share this with you because you asked me this question. God has given me great counsel. My my board members and my team members uh, are are awesome. You know, I was I was uh, we used to own a coffee shop. My parents, our parents, and us. Remember? Yeah, yeah we used to. Own a coffee shop. <laughs> and um, um, I had the CEO of of uh, Victoria's Secret. Um, he come in the coffee shop. He liked he liked me, and we were just hanging out and stuff. And we we're just sitting there. And he goes, um, he says, uh, "Hey, Beck, can, can I give you a piece of advice?" I'm like, absolutely. He's all always higher up, never higher down. Mm. Good one. So I've always taken that advice. And, and I'm not to I'm not I'm not saying that people are less than me. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. Right. But when I run a business. I have to be wise in how I move, right? All the people around me are freaking rock stars. I mean, they're, they're, they're amazing people. They're, they're um, ministers with a lot of integrity. There are movie people that are so freaking experienced. Like, like I'm a little, little tadpole in the big pond, you know what I'm saying? And then and, and in the music world, um, relationships with owners and executives of, of labels. And here comes little Beckman just rolling like, rolling in, you know, just trying to change the world. Impact one person, one, one, one person at a time. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, I, 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 I really, um, I really lean on my homies, you know what I'm saying? I got like, John Ramirez says, you got your outer court, and then you got your acquaintances, and then you got your fans, and then you got my homies, you know? And John, mm-hmm. homies. Me and John are really tight, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, we can we can totally identify that. I We can totally identify with that. Yeah, but but I do, um, um, I do uh, fellowship with a bunch of people. You know what I'm saying? I hang out with, and I don't even like the, the Christian lingo or hang out or, you know, uh, I'm not into the, the Christianese kind of stuff. It's just, Jesus was cool, man. That guy was cool. He was the <laughs> his day, you know what I'm saying? Right. Out of his day, he was going against the grain on everything. He was making people trip and like, ah, you know, telling him that he was a drunkard and he was a witchcraft and he was breaking all the laws, man. That's my kind of guy right there, you know what I'm saying? So, so I, yeah, go ahead. So speaking of Jesus, yeah. when you meet, Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. When was your road to Damascus, so to speak? My, ooh. Great question. (laughs) Great question. Okay. So the wake-up call was my son, right? When, when, you know, severe addict. I mean, like, I'm so like, like, so moved how, how, how he reached out his hand and grabbed me and he pulled me out of that. It was so addicted that I was so addicted that at one point in the addiction, I asked Lord if the only way you could use me, if people will look at me and say, I never want to be like that. Then use me in that one way. I was so addicted. Yeah. I, was, I was addicted to math. I was addicted to pornography. I was, I was so addicted. And I could 
the shame and the guilt that I felt, I wish for no man. You know, no man. You know, my dad, he looks, the other day I was helping him. Something very simple. And he reached his arms out like this to me and he says, I love you, son. Thank you. That, that meant so much to me because I put them through so much hell. I put them through. My poor mom and dad, I don't even know why they even still love me. You know what I'm saying? I just, just they wouldn't give up on me. They were relentless. Oh. Sorry. No, there it is. Now that we're all um, moved by your story, yeah, they were relentless. There's your relentless entertainment, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. You're right. If you can, um, continue on and tell us uh, how Jesus started to transform you out yes. of it. Well, I never answered your question. I kind of went off on them. Uh, it was your question because this is powerful. So, um, I went to a hotel room and I had a lot of meth with me and I bought a bunch of alcohol and I and I and I just told God I want to die. I want to die. Just please let me die. And so I went into the room and just started doing whatever, you know what I'm saying? And I called my mom. This is a true story. This is a true story. I called my mom and I and I started to get this. I was in there for three days. And I started to get this big cyst on the back of my neck. And I was just in horrible pain. And I started to feel myself going in and out. And um, I called my mom and I said, Mommy, um, I, I think, I, th I don't think I'm going to make this. And I, I don't, I just want to die. I just want to, I just want to go. And um, she said, son, where are you? Where are you, son? I said, I don't even really know. I don't know, mommy. And, um, and then I hung up the phone and I just let her be. And um, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure what happened next, but the next thing I know I hear this big pounding at the door. And I, 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 I like was dazed and confused and like didn't know what was going on. And finally the door got kicked in and it was my mom. My mom had found me. She, she had found me. Um, and then they were there with the, um, the managers of the hotel. They kicked in the door and my mom grabbed me. And at that, at that time I used to be a lineman too. I time telephone poles. And um, it was a big, big boy. And uh, come on, son, you can make it. You can make it. And uh, she, she put me in the car, and I just, I just went out again. And um, she drives me out um, to a place called Silver Lakes, out in the desert. And um, it's a, it's a resort, like a, like an upper class resort, and it has two lakes, a golf course. Uh, beautiful place and this is my first encounter with Jesus I she took me out to the desert um I was and I didn't even I didn't even know where we were at and that when we get when we got to the location she says open your eyes son. come on son come on you can do it and um she's like slapping me and, and pulling on me and getting the door open and like, come on, son, you can do this. And she dragged me up this, 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 um, this walkway, right? She dragged me and I still don't know where we're at. And, um, come on, son, you can make it, you can make it. She opens the door to this place 
She goes, son, stand up, stand up, stand up. And um, she opens the door, she drags me inside. And I said, where are we? What are we doing? What, what's going on? And she said, son, I bought this for you. This is your condo. This is your new condo. It's yours, son. And I looked at her. I said, what's wrong with you? I said, look at me. And when I looked into her eyes, that's, I saw Jesus. I said, why would you do this for me? I'm a mess. I love you, son. Your father and I love you. See, what people don't understand It's not the criticism and the guilt and the shame. It's the goodness of God that causes us to repent. It's not the abuse that you project on one. It's not the neglect or the rejection that causes them to, to want to be better. It's the love that you will give them, the time that you give them, the, 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 to let them know that you're still a part instead of rejecting them. Since when was God and Jesus in the spirit of rejection? He walked with 12 men, one woman that in, in, the, in the eyes of society were misfits. And he never rejected one. He didn't even reject his accuser. He didn't even reject his accuser. And he knew it the whole time as Judas walked near him. He loved him. And when we come into a place where we identify the person from the entity or the spirit, you will move mountains. Instead of laying down judgment and criticizing and, and ridiculing them, it's a spirit. It's something that's controlling their mind and their heart. You know, when I was when I was like 13, I started pulling wires out of my body because they were trying to control me. Ask John about it. They put implement things into you because they want to control you. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's why love is the greatest weapon of them all. It doesn't fear. It conquers all things. You know what I'm saying? And it never separates. As far as the East as is for the West. No hell, no hell, nor heaven. No angel, nor demon. No fire nor rain can separate us from the love of Christ. Come on. Wow. Amen. So your mom gives you your condo. Yeah. You well, see the love of Jesus. You're overcome with the love of Christ in that moment. Yeah. You felt undeserving and not worthy. Yeah. And so... Then what happened? Was it like you walked it out or was it radical salvation deliverance? You know, um, yeah, so um, went through a lot of deliverance, went through a lot of healing and you have to maintain that healing. You can't just like, oh, I'm good. That's good. You can always water the flower, <laughs> right? right. If you don't water the flower, it dies. You got to water your spirit, mm -hmm. your spirit. You gotta stay strong. You know, there's a there's a there's a scripture in Proverbs that says that a good report brings strength to the bones. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's why that's why like I try to be super, super um positive in my dialect with people. Even if I if I disagree with them, I always try to uh um bring something to the table. You know what I'm saying? Even in my in my in my my work ethic with because I have to talk a lot, 
I always try to be super chill and whatever. Sometimes, sometimes I fail, but, but it's, it's about, it's about really just like, um, understanding culture, just loving somebody, you know what I'm saying? And could you imagine when, when yeah. Woo. we are able to shift atmospheres, you know what I'm saying? Can I be super real with you? Yes. Here it comes. So I was working um, for a celebrity who um, I managed him, you know, for in every, almost every day. I don't care what people think. Bottom line, don't care because they were meant to touch the people I touch. So let me, let me show you something. So after I go down to the bar, I'd sit there and have a beer, right? And people would start coming up to me and said, hey, you're the manager of the, the guy down the street. I said, yes, sir. Right? So that, that uh, John calls them hooks. Gives, gives, uh, he, from a, from a, you, it, the hook is no different from the angelic or the, or the demonic. You just need a hook, right? That was my hook. Like, oh, you, they knew who we were, right? Come sit with me. Come sit with me. And you know, they would come sit with me and I would start praying over them in the bar. I should, the spirit of God in me, the Jesus in me started to shift the bar. I didn't let it shift me. Mm. I all pickled and all, you know, whacked out. I came out of there accomplishing something. You know what I'm saying? And 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 not only that, they started lining up at the bar for me to pray for them. In the bar. That's awesome. That's a different paradigm. You know, some that that's why that's why I really don't like Again, I'm not trying to knock you, but some some disagree with the way I operate. But I'm I'm supposed to touch that drunkard, I'm his heart or her heart. I'm there was a, we were on tour, we were on tour with the same guy. I was on tour with I was his I was in manager. This guy in the meeting is just disrupting the meeting. He was obviously on something, right? Well, he ended up going into the women's restroom, right? So they run over to me and they go, what do you want us to do? I said, do not call the police. Grab him, go in there, you know, make sure the ladies are all fine. Go in there, grab him, bring him down, set him down. Love on him, don't be mean to him. He's already got enough problems. So they set him down and after the meeting, he walks up to me, big crocodile crocodile tears in his eyes, streaming down his face, all messed up. And he says to me, he says, Michael, didn't even know how he knew my name. He goes, will you please pray for me? I said, absolutely. So me and Sam Shielders took him out back, prayed for him, led him to the Lord, right? He was the lead guitarist for uh, Stone Temple Pilots. His name was Michael Moon. Three months later, he was dead. Wow. Wow. So we didn't, my Bible tells me that we're to entertain strangers because we don't know if they're angels. Mm -hmm. We'd be giving our time to, you know, to, you, know you gotta be wise in how you do it, but we're all people. We all need love. So did that answer your question? <laughs> yes. And speaking of angels, tell us about how you met your Angela. Ah. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I got a friend request from her on Facebook. I don't, I, I usually don't take, um, because of the harassment and stuff that, that, that I've gotten, and some not so cool stuff and stuff I was coming out of and stuff. I really don't, um, unless I know you, I, it's just something that's a, it's a, um, it's a boundary I have for myself. You know what I'm saying? I don't really take, take friends that I don't know. 
but I took hers and um, I'm like, how do I know you? And she goes, well, how do you define me? And I'm like, you sent me a friend request. And she's like, no, I didn't. I was like, <laughs> yes, she did. She goes, no, I didn't. And I said, well, wow. I said, well, whatever. And I said, and then um, she said, uh, I noticed that I looked at her profile and she's from Georgia. And I said, hmm, this is interesting because I have a, a record label that I work with from Georgia. And my son was just sent there to do, his, you know, basic basic training and um so we just started talking and we talked for about almost two months it's driving me crazy driving me crazy and so um i went and got her and asked her to marry me and uh it's people on her side didn't didn't understand but see that's that's what's cool so cool about the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, right? I don't need a pastor to tell me it's wrong or it's, or you need to ask me to, to go, to go, you know, ask a lady to get married. Come on, man. No, I don't need that. If I ask God and God says yes, then I'm going. And so uh, that's how we got engaged. My, my mom and dad adore her. We adore her. She's so cool. We laugh. We're always laughing. You, you see us on Facebook. We're always busting up something, right? We're always chopping it up and laughing at something. And now, um, the cool thing is too is that um, when I knew something was going to happen, um, I felt like um, God was going to use me in her life uh, as part of her destiny. That, um, and then so, so I felt like the Lord was speaking to me. And um, as a sign, I said, I just said, uh, I just said, Angela, you're gonna start speaking. God's gonna start sending you out to speak. And the very first church service I took her in, she spoke. And that was like my sign that I know, I, I already know what she's going to be doing. I don't share much with her because it's not, it's, it's not time yet, but I know I know that um, her and I will be standing. And it, you know, it's, it's really not about standing before the mass, it's just the call. You know what I'm saying? It's just anybody can do it. As long as you're called, anybody can do it. So, but I know that um, she's got a journey with me in the movie business, um, in the music business, in the speaking the speaking arenas. And I, wanted, I want her to stand, not behind me, not in front of me, but aside me. Yeah. Walk it out. Cause it's no fun doing it alone, it's boring. Uh -huh. So you're such a unique individual that you truly walk out the love of Jesus Christ, you live it. So I try. Where, where did this mandate come from? Did God tell you, I'm calling you to make people's dreams come true? Or are you a seer? Do you have prophetic words for people? Walk, walk us through some of your spiritual gifts. Well, Gifts are nothing without Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can have a gift and not have the Lord in your life. And then you don't understand, you don't experience the fullness of why that's there and the love that goes along with it. I know people that are gifted, but they, they're really gifted, but they don't have the experience of God the Father or Jesus in their life. And so there's no bridge to really make it complete. You know what I'm saying? So like, um, I was uh, I was in the shower and I just had I had just gotten saved, and um, people can believe it or they don't. It doesn't matter to me. But um, I had a vision. And I was standing on a stage, a, a large stage with like 12, 12 team members, and there was a sea of people. And um, I was looking I was looking out through the stage, but I was also looking through a camera, and um, and I was in a major arena. Well, all that stuff's come true. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 my, my call was in the entertainment industry and I didn't know it until I had people come to me and say, you're gonna go, you're gonna go to Hollywood and you're gonna go take it over. 
and or not to get over, you know, but be a part of it. And I was like, yeah, right. I don't know anybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And um, um, in the in the in the vision, that's why I I don't pray with my eyes closed. If God's gonna do something. I want to I want to see this. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't I don't close my eyes. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was the only one that did that. No, I, I, and people find it disrespectful, but you know what? Don't care. <laughs> I just just walk out, walk out. I just walk out. Me. So anyway, um, uh, the, and then he, he said that I'm going to give you an organization called Relentless after the intercession of your mother. So after the prayers of my mother, that one day that I would come back, be the prodigal son that I would come back and, and walk out my destiny. So that's not that's why we're called Relentless. And then um, he said, stay humble. Stay humble or rip it out of your hands. And that's why like, I really posture myself um, in a position to just assist and, and help people. You know what I'm saying? It's not about, it's not about um, status or titles. It's like, why did, why did God bring me to you ladies? Why? I know why. Because I'm supposed to help you walk out your destiny. Each one of you ladies got a great destiny. And I'm supposed to help you. I'm supposed to open every door that I can for you ladies. Because it, it was the prayers of the mother. I'm sitting here today. My mom would not let go. No matter how evil or mean or horrible I was her, she, she just loved me. And that's why I'm just like a huge advocate of, of moms and love and all that kind of stuff. Mm. Wow. That's awesome. I just want to weep. <laughs> <laughs> we just think your story is incredible. So have you ever told your story on a platform like this or? Yeah, um, I've, I've done it quite a bit. I've, I've been on a, not, nothing like John, but uh, I've done TV shows and, and um, but I, you, you this interview has been truly unique because um, you, you guy, you ladies, are speaking more of bringing out the warrior inside of me and how I and how I move and, and how I um, address people and how I angle things. Most people want to know like what I do, you know, like in the movie business or you know something like that or you know you you provoked uh, in in your questions for me to to just set that aside and because really. It's just a tool. It's just a tool um, the, that opens a door for me to be able to talk about the love of Christ. You know what I'm saying? They, the last person they probably expect is someone as hairy as me to talk about something so gentle. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And that um, um, just it just loves the answer. That's what it is. It just loves the answer. So, so could we revisit quickly your um, motorcycle gang? Do, have you witnessed to any of those guys since you've been transformed by Jesus, or was that kind of a family when you didn't have a family? Or no, my my I rejected my family when I was when I when I was sixteen years old. I looked at my father in the eyes. I said, "He said get ready to church," and I said, "Nope." I don't want to say what I said, but I said, you guys are a bunch of punks and no backbone. And I'm not living my life like that. You know, I'm not letting people tread on me. That's because that's what I saw growing up is, you know, my mom and dad taking, I remember my mom crying and my dad comforting my mom from things what people said or even the culture of our family. You know what I'm saying? My dad being white, my mom being Mexican, us, the twins being Mexican and my my brother being Vietnamese, mean accusations, stupid, you know, just the the how how 
volatile the mind could get when it wants to be, you know what I'm saying? I walked away and I wasn't gonna be like that. So um, my whole thought was, okay, this gives me free reign to be violent, to do what I want, and and to be the wild man that um, that I've always wanted to be inside, like the the, the basically it was just the demon demons or the the the, the the uncleanliness in me that that wanted to go out and experience what that was all about. And it did, and and I did, and I paid for it. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, to answer your question, so I started to, um, the night I was initiated into the club, um, my sponsor died, Was he was killed in a car accident. And um, so, and this is, you fast forwarded quite, quite, quite far ahead. So, um, uh, of me speaking of the spiritual nature that, which I'm speaking now, that's fast forward a lot. This so we had to go back a ways. Um, when you are raised by pastors or people that know the word of God or, or ha have spirituality in their life, you can run, but you can't hide. It's always, it, it's it's rooted into your DNA. It's rooted into your bones and into your bloodline. You remember the teachings that you were given and there's no running away from it. Even even in all the, uh, the debauchery that I was in, I always, I, I, it was always there. So, um, um, okay, so I walked away from it, right? And the, I, I won't, I won't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say any names and stuff like that. I won't do that. I won't even say the club. But, um, the cool thing about it is the top guy, the national president, was my best brother. He oversaw all the United States. He was my best brother. And um, when I started to change my life, when I got saved, God started to send me out. I started speaking and 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 doing, you know, fun things, you know what I'm saying? Telling my testimony stuff. And he took I took him on a trip with me, my my biker brother. And I was speaking in this kind of like large theater, right? And they had that theater sitting, so you had to slope down to 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 the platform. And I got called, so they they bring me up, they introduce me, and I take the platform. And I speak for like forty five minutes, and um, at the end of the, everybody comes down, you know, the altar call and stuff like that. We gave an altar call, and um. My brother was sitting in the back, and um, we've seen brothers die. We've seen people locked up and bloodshed and all that kind of stuff. Never once, not once, did I ever see my brother cry until I got done speaking one day. He's a very quiet man. He meets me halfway down the altar. I'm coming up this way. And he looks at me and got tears running down the face. And he goes, where's Mikey? Where's he at? I said, you got it right, brother. The voice that you heard or the, the things that you heard were of Christ. They were of Mikey. That's what he called me, called me Mike. And he was crying and I just held him. I said, I love you, brother. I love you. About a week later, a week later, um, he calls me and he goes, this is all he says. He says, I'm like you now, Mikey. And he hangs up and that's it. He had given his heart to the Lord and had, had, uh, had, um, had totally, and now uh, Angela's met him now. 
and a totally different person. And um, you, you can see pictures of us on Facebook now. And yeah, he's a totally different man. So, wow. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Wow. You're you're in ministry without being in ministry because you we are the church. That's so cool. Yeah. I don't like to call it that. I just like to call it like people. Even John tries to say this is your ministry. I'm like oh, I hate that word. Just <laughs> call it love or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah. you know what's funny is you you talked about perfect love casting out all fear. Mm -hmm. Had some. We've had a lot of warfare on us. Um, you know since we started being on Facebook, which we thought was just this little. We were just being obedient to God, being on Facebook and praying for people because some moms don't pray for their kids. So oh. we will cover those kids in the gap. God gave us a burden to pray for every child in the whole world. Hmm. May not have anyone praying for them. Come on. So um, you said There's perfect love. You ladies. Yeah, it's, no it's uncomfortable, you know, it's uncomfortable, but I, I had to repent discomfort for five minutes you know because when jesus was being hung on the cross they were spitting on him you know so i just love i love your life and i love your courage and i think you know we really admire that and we're stepping out in courage as well and perfect love casts out all fear has been our scripture this weekend because we truly love the hater that came up against us yesterday and we asked the lord to bless this person above and beyond any she could hope or think and that she's worth far more than rubies and she's she's precious in his sight and so i just think this is a divine connection and you inspire us when all your ways please the lord even your enemies will have peace with you yeah no yeah. awesome thank you thank, well thank you for that encouraging word that was nice of you that was kind yeah michael we would be honored if you would lead us in a prayer for prodigals sure um, Lord Heavenly Father, I thank you for um, this opportunity uh, to be able to pray uh, for the uh, prodigal sons and daughters of the earth, Lord. The only thing that they're missing is the is the is, is this true concept that no matter where they are or whatever they're doing, whatever they are up to, they are loved. They are totally loved, and it doesn't matter. What society says about them it doesn't matter uh the negativity that they get from the world or their or by their friends or by their family or the negative compound the con um uh comments they may receive the fact is is that you have an ancient royal line god loves you that jesus died on the cross for you he shed his blood for you he took the worst beating that a person could have ever taken, ever taken for you. And for the things that 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 you may have been into or whatever, that he loved you so much that he found it reasonable to go to the cross. The Lord, I ask that you you bless these prodigal sons, and I ask that they come into an identity or a, a a a real encounter of who you are, Lord. I ask that they turn from their ways, and and that you you. I I know in some situations it's not an overnight process. I get that, but we gotta we the fish has gotta be caught before you can clean it. So, Lord, I ask that you that the net go out. That, that whoever hears this and who is ever struggling with addictions or or um, sickness or anything that is afflicting their body, or afflicting their minds or their spirit, that there is an answer. There is a God. And, and he wants you. He wants you to come home. My Bible tells me that God wishes that no man should perish. No man. And for those that who were, who were, um, uh, have started off their lives or at one point coming to, to the kingdom of God or to the kingdom of light or however you want to say it, and have walked away, here, here, here's something that you need to know. That he's never stopped loving you. 
that he's even written your name in his hand. He's engraved your name in his hand because he loves you so much. I ask you to bless these, these men and women, these, these uh, daughters, these sons, these moms, these dads, whoever they are, Lord God, wherever they may be, I ask that you encounter them right where they're at. I ask you to bless them from the crown of their head to the toes of their feet. Lord, I ask that you bless bless this programming, Lord Heavenly Father. I ask that that um, that Rachel and Jay Z that that this goes through all the world. That this is just the beginning. Your word says. Your word says that when we carry the love of Christ, it says your fame shall be known throughout the nations. And so, Lord, I ask you to bless these mighty women. Bless their children and bless their families. Bless their husbands. And bless every paradigm in their life. And Lord, Heavenly Father, I ask that prosperity, grace, and mercy chase them all the days of their life. In the precious and almighty name of Jesus, amen. Wow. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. That was so beautiful. Oh, I feel like you didn't get up and cry. I know. <laughs> oh, your prayer was so beautiful. And I saw the spirit of the Lord hovering over each boy and each girl and each parent and each that you have a mantle for that. You have a gift for calling that in. That was awesome. Thank you so much for your time, my friend. You're welcome. Welcome. In um, in meetings with with um, let, let, me, let me clarify something. I work in that's very uh, 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 noticeable, right? You don't need to be noticeable for me to notice you. I've had people kind of judge me, like you know, you have to be somebody to for me to engage, and we're all somebody. All, every single one of us are somebody. And every single one needs someone to need love. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. You need to be loved. Yeah. The spiritual realm is scary. Yeah. Discernment. When you have the spirit of God in you, you can discern the evil from the from the from from the angelic. You know what I'm saying? You know when in your spirit what is there to hurt you and harm you. But when you walk with the power and the might of Christ and the and the love of God, it casts out all that fear. And you are able to walk with authority amongst the serpents and the scorpions, amongst the demons and principalities of the earth. And you walk with authority. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I... I I'm so like I'm I'm mesmerized by the power of God sometimes because He allows me to walk with the executives in Hollywood, which is a it could be a cutthroat kind of thing, but I ain't scared. What do I do? You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I I'm a I'm a I'm I'm from a little church from Barstow, California, with an outlaw background, and and God took me there and sent me to Hollywood to change the atmosphere, to impact culture, to impact lives, and to love on Hollywood. She opens the door, she drags me inside. 
I said, where are we? What are we doing? What, what's going on? She said, son, I bought this for you. This is your condo. This is your new condo. It's yours, son. And I looked at her. I said, what's wrong with you? I said, look at me. And when I looked into her eyes, that's, I saw Jesus.